Hello, welcome to Board with Paint. Today I'll be showing you how to paint the Brewis from The Witcher Old World. I remember how creepy and disgusting she was when I first met her in The Witcher 3 video game. So I'm glad to finally have an opportunity to paint her. As you can see, she's already prepped and primed, so let's jump right into the painting. I'm starting off painting all of her skin with Bugman's Glow. For pretty much all of her clothing, I'll be giving it a base coat of Dryad Bark from Citadel. I'm trying my best to avoid the apron and the patches because we want to paint those white later on. And I'm also trying to stay away from some of the accessories that are attached to her ropes. So including the dress portion of her outfit, we're also doing her upper whatever she has on her shoulders. And we'll also use this to paint the bag that's over her head. I'm using AK Interactive's Golden Brown to paint the wicker mesh in front of her face. I'll also be using this to paint all of the ropes all over the miniature. There are quite a few of them, so be sure you don't miss any. Next, I'm giving the apron a base coat of warm gray. I'm also using this for all of the patches that are all over her outfit. For the various wooden spoons that are attached to her belt, I'm using Xandri Dust. On each hip, she's got a little leather sack. I'm painting that with English uniform. Ladle, I'm going for a cast iron look, so we'll just give this a base coat of Abaddon Black. I'm also using this for the lock and chain and collar around her neck. We'll finish these off with non-metallic metal later on. I'm also using this to paint the sides of the base and any part of the top of the base that's not covered by her dress. And finally, she's got these really black claws in all of the artwork. I'm using the Abaddon Black for those as well. 
I'm painting the little rabbit carcass in silver gray. Next, we'll apply some Ashen Stone Speed Paint to the rabbit just to give it some shading. Now I'll move on to highlighting all the flesh. And for this, I'm mixing some Miskatonic Gray from Scale Color into the base color of Bugman's Glow. I went with the gray because I wanted to give it sort of a deadish, purplish look. I want it to look very unhealthy. We'll apply these highlights in a couple of layers, hitting the upper portions of the skin and the upper folds. I'm pretty much leaving the undersides of the arms and hands untouched though. Here we want to get the individual fingers and stay away from the recesses inside so they stay separated. We'll continue to lighten this up by adding a little more gray and reapplying those highlights over the same places. Now I'm applying a third level of highlight, same way we did before. This time adding a little bit more gray. And for the final highlight, I want to say this is maybe 60-40 gray to Bugman's Glow. This time we'll cover the least amount of area of all the highlights. Now to highlight the clothing, we'll mix some Talorn sand into the Dryad bark to lighten it. And we'll hit the upper regions of any of the folds in the fabric and anything that is facing upward. This includes where the dress is splayed out around the ground. And any of the upturned surfaces coming from the ridges in the fabric. We want to make sure we highlight the upper part of the rear end here where it is facing upward a little bit. And then we move on to the upper part of the garment and the bag over the head. And just as we did with the skin, we'll add more of our highlight color in and reapply these highlights, this time over a slightly smaller area. Now we'll add a little more Talon Sand to the Dryad Bark. And this time we'll start to add some texture to the fabric. You can see I'm making short horizontal strokes here instead of 
sort of blending the highlighting in. I want it to look like there is some stitching on this fabric. So anywhere there's highlighting, I'm using these horizontal strokes. And we'll apply this over several different layers, um, not necessarily adding much more talon sand. We'll just build this up without increasing the brightness. As these little hash marks pile up on top of each other, they'll add interest and make the fabric look a little bit more complex than it is. Now we're going with almost pure talon sand and continuing to use those little hash marks. Once that's dry, we'll shade all of the clothing with Agrax Earthshade. We also want to be sure to hit all of the ropes with this. To shade the skin, I'm mixing a little bit of water in with some Drukei Violet Shade. We're not applying this all over the skin, mostly on the areas that are facing downwards and within any of the recesses or folds of fat on the skin. We can also stipple this over a few areas to make it look like bruising. Since we thin this down, I'm building this up in different areas over several layers. I think this gives the flesh a really disgusting, bloated, dead look that matches what was in the video game. Now using some black ink, I'm using this to shade the mesh wicker around her face so that we can really see the texture pop. And then I'm going in underneath any of the folds in the fabric and reinforcing the shadows there. This will both provide contrast and make the outfit look pretty dirty.
Next, I'm thinning down some Vallejo Game Color Dark Flesh Tone with a significant amount of water making a sort of glaze. As with all glazes, we wick off excess on a paper towel. And then I'm going around and stippling this mostly on the apron to sort of give the look of some dried blood or dried dirt. I'm then moving all around the miniature and applying this sparingly in a few other places. I also decided to apply some of this to the skin to add the illusion of some additional bruising. Now we'll paint the metal lock and chain and collar around her neck by mixing some silver gray in with some Abaddon black and applying this as a first highlight over some of the raised surfaces. I'm just kind of making this up as I go, adding the highlights where it feels like they should be. You can see where I did it here. Unfortunately, I had some trouble getting this on camera, so I'm not able to show you every single step here, but I will show you the final result at the end. I'll try to do better next time. Sorry about that. Here we're using almost pure silver gray. And this will be our smallest highlight. You can see these are the little glints of light on that metal. And that completes the Bruis from the Witcher Old World. I hope you enjoyed the video as much as I enjoyed painting the miniature. If you did, give it a like, subscribe to my channel for more videos like it, and follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, where I'll sometimes give you some previews as to what's coming up next. I've got a couple more monsters from The Witcher coming up next. I'm excited to share those with you. But until then, happy painting.